adventure. Here's romance. Here's O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the Old West, the Cisco Kid. Nice riding, Helen. Thanks, Frank. How was the time, Dad? Faster than any thoroughbred could make it. Still talking through your hat, eh, Joe? Maybe, but not as loud as you do about your long-legged hay burners. Breathing those overgrown grasshoppers has sure idle your brains. And you haven't got a lick of sense ever since you started raising those blue-blooded crow bait. Yeah? Yeah. That's enough, you two. You're worse than a couple of mules the way you argue about your breeds of horses. There wouldn't be any arguments if he had sense enough to admit that when it comes to running a quarter of a mile, a quarter horse will beat a thoroughbred every time. Why, look at Ranger. Look at that powerful chest and rump. That's what gives him and other quarter horses that tremendous burst of speed. Now, Joe, you know as well as I that for beauty, speed, and endurance, there's nothing that can touch a thoroughbred. There isn't, huh? Well, my friend, Ranger can beat the fastest horse you've got without batting a whisker. Now, hold on, you two. Why don't you settle all this by holding a race? That suits me. Me too. How about a little bet to make it interesting? All right, I'll bet 500 on Ranger. 500, why, uh... 500? <laughs> I guess he hasn't much confidence in Ranger, eh, boss? What'd you expect from an old windbag like him? I've got 5,000 that says you're all wet. 5,000? You heard me. This is downright silly. Do you have to bet on the race to prove your point? And 5,000 at that. What about it, Joe? Fish or cut bait? Dad, please. All right, you've got yourself a bet. We'll hold it right here tomorrow morning. That suits me. Sam, it's in the bag. I finally talked Joe and the boss into holding a race for $5,000 at Joe's place tomorrow morning. Well, that's great, Terry. I've been waiting 20 years for a chance to break Joe Butler. When I get through with him, he won't have a red cent to his name. You just make sure that nothing goes wrong and that Butler wins the race. Butler win the race? I thought you wanted him to lose. Not this time. This is a build-up for a nice little frame that'll strip him of everything he has. Understand? I get it. Now get busy. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What can I do for you? My friend wants his photograph taken. Yeah, well, I want it back again because it's for Mama Maria and Guadalajara. And, uh, oh, oh, you are, you are Senor Carson, eh? Yes, yes. And if I may say so, the finest photographer in the West. Oh. <laughs> Step right over here, please. Yes. Over oh, here? Uh -huh. Now, I'll take your hat. 
Hey, you gonna give back to me? Of course. Uh, do you want a profile? No, I'd like to have an enchilada because I'm hungry. Uh, no, uh, would you like it sitting or standing? No, I want it hanging from the wall, eh? <laughs> he means uh, the picture, mister. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, put your hand here. Where? Right here. You don't got no little birdies? Uh, no, no birdies. Uh -huh. There. Uh -huh. Now, uh, to the right. Now put your hand on the gun. My hand on the gun? There. Now, we'll put this little gadget here. Boy, so keep your head steady. Oh, you've got <laughs> to be very quiet. Yeah. Huh? Look pretty, Pancho. Yeah, Pancho all look pretty, Cisco. Mind your own business. Now, uh, turn your head a little to the right. To the left, a trifle. Up a little. Uh, now, drop your chin to the left. Yes. Say, this is my neck you're twisting. This ain't no corkscrew. Oh, please. Ah. Way to treat a horse? No, senor. That's my horse, and I'll treat him the way I like. Not with a whip. Look, you. Keep your nose out of my business, or you'll get it flattened. That I wouldn't like. Then clear out of here. I don't need any advice from you how to train a horse. And you don't need a whip, either. Oh, tough guy, eh? Well, mister... <laughs> Maybe now he knows how the horse feels. Too bad, such a nice fella, too. Now, will you tell me why you were beating that horse? Every time I try to put a bridle on a jughead, he tried to bite me. Look, mister, you can get better results with kindness. Pancho, show the gentleman how to put a bridle on. It will be a pleasure. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Pancho is a good friend to a good horse. No, 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 no. You know, if you treat, if, if your horse makes good friends with a horse, your horse makes good friends with Pancho, and then everybody's going to be happy, and we show those fellas that you ain't half so mean like you look like, huh? That's the best way to do, I think, because you got your ear back there, and we fix that. Now, that's a pretty horse, and you see what a good horse will do if people would treat them good, and always be a good horse, and don't fight because uh, a Pancho loves you, see? That's what I mean. Eh? You'll be a good horse, that good boy. See how simple it is? Just relax and take it easy. Come on, Pancho. Remember, mister, when you lose your temper, that's the hardest thing to find. And don't forget it. You've been asking for this for a long time, Terry. Yeah. Well, he had a gun and I didn't. That's something I'm going to correct in Toronto. You promised to have them ready this morning. We go to your place, it's all closed up. We'll find you here. Oh, I forgot. You'll have them as soon as the race is over. What race? A horse race, mister. 
between my best quarter horse and his finest thoroughbred. Well, they're almost ready to start. Ranger in front. Come on, Helen. Come on, Ranger. Hold on, Bill. Come on. Boys, get him over to the doctor, quick. Is he hurt badly, Dad? We don't know yet. We'll soon find out. I'll take that. Just a minute. Oh, so you're the man with the whip and still mad. I was only looking at the cinch. What caused that cinch to break, Terry? Bill must have tightened it too hard, boss. Maybe. And maybe somebody doctored it with a little acid. Acid? Yes, nitric acid. Smell the ends. You wouldn't know anything about this, would you, Joe? Are you insinuating that Dad did it? Well, he stood to lose $5,000, didn't he? Now, look here. You know darn well I'd have called off that bet. Now, don't lose your temper, Joe. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Frank Wallace. Joe never did a dishonest thing in his whole life. Well, there's always a first time. Why? Why, you... I'll thank you to get off our ranch and stay off. And you can forget about that bet. Come on, Terry. Oh, I'm a crook, am I? Well, I'll show him. Now, calm down, Joe. He'll be around again after he thinks things over. You mark my word. Good day, Helen. I suppose you think my dad is guilty. I didn't say so, miss. No, but it's written all over your face. You are wrong, senorita. Cisco don't got no writings on top of his face. <laughs> Would you mind holding out your hand, sir? Palms up. Well, I don't see why, but if it'll make you happy. Thanks. What was that for? Nitric acid leaves stains that are not easily removed. Your father didn't tamper with that cinch, miss. Then perhaps I did. Take a look at my hands. They're very beautiful. Don't you think so, Pancho? I suppose did you say so, Cisco. Good day, miss. Good day, sir. Come on, Pancho. You know, Cisco, this fella Terry, the whip man, he didn't like the way he was looking at the cinch. You know why, Pancho? No, why? He is the man that burned the cinch with acid. I noticed stains on his finger. <laughs> you know, Cisco, sometimes you and me is pretty smart, don't you? Yes, Pancho. <laughs> but I'm wondering why he tried to sell out the man he's working for. Oh, that's simple like falling on top of the log. This fellow Butler and him is in cahoodles. Ah, you're wrong, Pancho. If they were, Butler would have insisted on collecting his bed. But well, tell me why. I don't know, Pancho. But I think we'll keep an eye on this, Terry. Come on. Bueno. This exciting adventure of the Cisco Kid will continue in just a moment. I need your help. A couple of strangers got into my hair out of the old deserted mine. How about it? I get it.
Do you know him, Pancho? No, Cisco, I don't realize him. He's got a face what i never seen before. Did you get a good look at the others? Yes, it was our friend with a whip. Why they want to bushwhackle us? You'll find out. We better take him back to the sheriff. Then we'll go and see Mr. Butler. Now, we understand each other thoroughly, Jackson. Certainly. When Butler gets here, I want you to... Oh, come in, Joe. You sent for me, Sam. What's on your mind? Mr. Jackson, Mr. Butler. Glad to know you, Mr. Jackson. Pleasure's mine. He's been rather anxious to meet you. He's a horseman like yourself. Oh, so you're a horseman, too. Go in any for quarter horses. No, as a matter of fact, I breed thoroughbreds. Oh. I heard about your race and the difference of opinion between yourself and Mr. Wallace. And as a breeder of thoroughbreds, I suppose you think he's right. Well, I'm not a betting man, but I'll wager my bankroll if thoroughbreds are faster. You've got a bet, mister. I'll stake my ranger against the best you've got. No doubt you would, but that wouldn't be a fair test. Why not? Well, a quarter horse is bred to develop an early burst of speed, while a thoroughbred is bred for staying qualities. Oh, then you'll admit that over a quarter of a mile, a quarter horse will beat a thoroughbred. Certainly. But I won't admit that four quarter horses, even with their early burst of speed, can beat a thoroughbred over a mile. Rubbish. You willing to make a bet on a race like that? Four of your quarter horses against my best thoroughbred? Any time. And you can name the stakes. Fine. This afternoon and for $50,000. $50,000? Why, that'd break me. Well, you'd lose the race, if that's what you mean. Take him on, Joe. Don't let him bluff you. All right, you're called, mister. Fine. Well, if it's agreeable to you, gentlemen, we'll step over to the bank, draw up the agreement, and let your banker hold the stakes. Let's be on our way. I'm on the way to your ranch to see you, Mr. Butler. Well, what's on your mind? You haven't agreed to run another race, have you? How did you know about that? You know, you were right, Cisco. You told me that he was gone. Say, what's this all about? Let's get on to your ranch, sir. There's a lot to talk about. Here's my boy. Nash, meet Mr. Butler. How do you do? Well, Helen, I thought you were going to ride the race. Oh, no, I changed my mind. This is my jockey. Are you ready, Cisco? All ready. Now, gentlemen, you all understand the rules. This is a race between a quarter horse and a thoroughbred. Now, the quarter horse will ride the first quarter of a mile. Then the rider will transfer to the second quarter horse and ride the next quarter of a mile. At the end of the half, both horses will turn around and repeat the procedure. Now, the first horse across the finish line is the winner. Of course, you understand that the thoroughbred will run the entire race. Jockeys mount up. Mister, would you mind saying that again? up to the starting line. Steady now. Go! Come on, Cisco! Come on, Cisco!
The thoroughbred can't make the turn. Look at him, he's going past. Fire there. Come on, Fire there. Come on, Bingo. He's up again. I think maybe the sheriff, you want to take your picture now. You know, Cisco, this Carson is just like my Uncle Tito, only they are different in the same way. What do you mean, Pancho? Well, you told me this Carson, you want to break this butler because butler married up with the girl he wants to marry, huh? So what's that got to do with your Uncle Tito? Well, you know, Uncle Tito and his friend, they fall in love with the same senorita who's got beautiful long hair. Oh, it was magnolious. But uh, the friend, he win her. You mean your Uncle Tito held a grudge against his friend? No, no, no. He lent the money to the friend to marry up with her. Now, wait a minute. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, then my Uncle Tito find out that this beautiful hair that belonged to this girl didn't belong to her. She buy it in a store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The Cisco Kid will be back in a moment. 